I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Lee, mm -hmm. uh, and he's a postdoctoral research associate. I believe he's, he's working with Dr. Dr. Ouyang. And he came here from uh, Tsinghua University. Did I say it right? Yes. Tsinghua. Yeah, he, he, he got his PhD in Tsinghua University in 2015, and Tangji University in Shanghai in 2009. His, 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 his BE. And, and then he's uh, been working with Dr. Ouyang, and his presentation is today is about optimal operations and resource allocation for improving shared mobility systems. Dr. Li is also the coordinator of the Chinese-American Railway Transportation Joint Research Center. Let's welcome him for his presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Chao, and uh, I work as a postdoc uh, with Professor Ouyang, and. Uh, uh, I'm very glad to be here and sh you know have this opportunity to share some of our research on uh, shared mobility systems. And uh, in part particular, I uh, will well, you know talk about uh, you know two of the topics that uh, how we try to manage you know to try to improve the uh, uh, performance and also the utilization of the resource of the you know some of the shared mobility systems. So. The shared mobility is a uh, you know, very general concept. You know, based on, uh, based on different travel mode, it has different names. Uh, for example, the ride sharing, bike sharing, riding, uh, scooter sharing, uh, car sharing, and uh, like micro transit. But uh, all of these different modes share some uh, common features. I'll, I conclude like three points. The one is they are shared use of the vehicles. No matter what kind of vehicles you're using, it's shared use. And the second one is, is short term. Uh, it ha you can only short access these uh, the vehicles or the bikes in the short term. And uh, the last one is most important, I think, is they are always, you know, al almost always on demand service. So the shared mobility have a lot of uh, advantages. So from uh, sy system wide, like the urban to the urban transportation systems, uh, the biggest uh, advantage is that it can through the share of vehicles. The, uh, the total of vehicle distance being traveled, you know, can be decreased to serve the same amount of demand. And uh, you know, since the uh, distance being reduced, then the, the you know there will be less congestion, and less congestion will lead to less emission, uh, emissions and pollutions and so on. And from the uh, user side, you know, from users' point of view, uh, the shared mobility can provide uh, better accessibility to the city, especially for you know for those of people who. Uh, cannot afford a car or don't want to buy a car, you know. And uh, from the social point of view, you know, some some some, some reports in, uh, in, uh, in some paper would argue that it can create more jobs, especially you know for Uber and Lyft, you know Uber driver and Lyft drivers. But uh, but I would put a question mark there because uh, I'm not sure if this is you know uh, gonna last forever because especially with uh, autonomous vehicle, you know, uh, being. Uh, why if, if, if autonomous will be widely used in the future for ride sharing, then more jobs might, might not be true. So, but sharing mobility is actually not a new concept. But the you know the recent popularity of this uh, shared mobility should thanks to two things. One is the uh, the widely adopted of the smartphones all over the world. Al almost everybody now has a smartphone, and this smartphone will always be. A GPS enabled and also the internet connected, so uh, the users and also the system can you know commute with each other, uh, commute their location with each other, right, and on a real-time basis. Another another thing is that uh, the emergency and the rapid growth, you know, tremendous growth of the uh, we call the shared mobility service providers, which include like Uber, Lyft, uh, Mobike, and DD, and so on, and so many, you know, they are. But the, the major uh, contribution of these companies is that it always provides those powerful systems and algorithms to support the efficient efficient uh, operations of the shared mobility system, systems. But the shared mobility system always, you know, has some challenges, and one of the most critical one, but also the, the one that we that we're really interested in, is the imbalance between the travel demand and the and the resource. A supply, and this this kind of imbalance can be either you know spatial wise or temporal wise or both. But no matter you know which one, uh, this issue is all it is always this you know shared uh, mobility uh, shared mobility companies they are struggling with. 
So today, uh, uh, I will like introduce two approaches uh, that we uh, developed to kind of to try to address this issue uh, for like two different uh, sharing movie systems. One is for ride sharing, uh, one is for bike sharing, and why why for ride sharing? First, let's take a look at the uh, the bike sharing one. So the the bike sharing is everywhere, right? Here is a picture I show. This is uh, uh, the very right, which has been just uh, been launched this uh, by the end of, uh, by the beginning of this semester, and uh, they have launched like uh, uh, you know deploy about 500 bikes uh, all over campus, and you can access that, them you know. Uh, you but just download the app and you know register account. But this is only for for champagne. But you know actually the bike sharing is uh, the development all is being developed all over the world and has reported that over thousands of the you know bike sharing systems uh, programs or cities are doing this and you know with millions of bikes put on the street and this is you know still ongoing and you know it has reported that. More than 400 cities, are, 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 you know, they are planning or trying to implement bike sharing systems in their cities. But the the bike sharing systems usually have to you know, face a very important question, which is due to the imbalance of the travel demand, the the inventory of the bikes at different locations will they usually suffer from you know either excess excess or deficit. Now after running after the system, you know, we're running for a uh, little time, and so in order to you know to maintain this system system operation of these systems, this uh, this kind of what we call it a bike rebalancing operations must be implemented. Which means that you know the the trailer like uh, vehicles has to be deployed to visit different you know locations, uh, bike sharing locations, to pick up the uh, the bikes from. You know, from those locations with excessive number of bikes, and then you know, move them to the location where you know uh, we have less or deficit of the bikes. And without proper you know uh, rebalancing operations, the systems, the factory system, would very likely to be to fail. So in literature, this type of bike sharing, uh, bike sharing rebalancing problem is modeled as uh, we call it one commodity pickup delivery problem. It is uh, like a variant of the VRP problem. The difference, uh, the un unique part is that uh, the the items being being uh, we, we consider are identical. So the item item collected from a pickup location can be used as a you know as a to be used to fulfill demand in the drop off location. So th this is a formulation of this uh, discrete formulation of the uh, one company uh, pickup delivery problem. Uh, it seems a little bit messy, but actually uh, the formulation is pretty. Straightforward and easy to develop. The real challenge here is how to solve this problem, especially for the large scale uh, systems. That's because you know uh, this this type of pickup and delivery problem is uh, routing problem is really difficult, more difficult than solving the VRP problem because of the additional decision on you know to how to manage the low levels along the tour. Unlike the VRP, you know just increasing or decreasing. This one is going up. And, and down all over, you know, all all all, all along the uh, the trip. So, uh, just due to this kind of uh, computation of burden, you know, most of the uh, efforts uh, and nowadays has been, you know, being focused on developing a uh, heuristic or metaheuristic method to if to to only to solve like single ver single little version of the uh, when when people uh, when community not a delivery problem. We call it one PD TSP, right? And then even for this, they can only solve like the instance for less, less than 500 customers. But what if you know the the number of customers was even would be even like, for example, if we consider the dockless uh, systems, the number of the location or the stations for bikes are, are enormous, right? So in that case, by using this type of Heuristic or metaheuristic uh, algorithm, it would be rather difficult to get a reasonable good solution in a very short time. So here we we propose to kind of employ this uh, so-called continuum approximation method and trying to model the pickup and delivery process in a, a, a asymptotic way. And in that case, we just you know somehow uh, reduce the difficulty of the the model so we can solve the problem in a more efficient way. The main idea is that uh, is this: you know, we consider a region. Then this region we partition the uh, partition it into like a set of homogeneous subregions, roughly, approximately uh, homogeneous subregions. 
which in each region, the pickup and delivery customers are respectively and, you know, evenly distributed, right? Then we employ the continuous same method to try to do some local approximation for each sub-area, sub-region, to get some more compact form of formulation. Then, since the, you know, the, the, the pickup demand and uh, the uh, delivery demand in one sub-region might not be self-balanced, in my, uh, there might be case that you know, the vehicle uh, that would have extra uh, you know, bikes and by the end of the tour, all the vehicle needs to you know, have an initial load at the beginning of the tour. You know. So if each sub-region might either be surplus or deficit. And we, in this case, we need to somehow employ a so-called long-haul service to kind of clear and match the uh, surplus and deficit across, across different, ro uh, different regions. And since, so the local uh, operations and the long haul operations can be conducted by different vehicles. For example, for local operations can be conducted like, uh, for this is from uh, New York City. They are using this bike tra trailer to, because it uh, has a smaller capacity and uh, more flexible to use in uh, congested cities, right? And for the long haul service, they are going to use some like truck, a commercial truck. We have a larger capacity and can, you know, Travel in a higher speed to travel long distance. Here, let's first, first uh, focus on the uh, the pickup and the delivery process in one subregion. We in uh, in this homogeneous subregion, we have the input we have is the density of the pickup and delivery customers, the density of the uh, demand, and the number of vehicles being assigned in this region, and also the capacity and the time limit for each for the for each tour in the, in this area. So the central problem here is that how should, how can we you know model this pickup delivery process in a, a approximate way? So here we we assume that if this homogeneous area is large enough and uh, you know both type of either pickup and delivery customers are densely distributed and uh, this pickup and delivery activity shall fall in a somehow alternating pattern. So that that means that instead of look, looking for uh, the exact route to visit each individual customers. We, we, we just let the vehicles to visit different customers based on certain pickup delivery cycle. But just like this, you know, uh, visit how many, uh, many uh, two pickup and pick, uh, pick up, uh, pick up demand and one uh, delivery customers. And we use the ratio of pickup stops to the delivery stop in one cycle uh, to define this pickup delivery cycle. So here, this example is pretty straightforward, right? So the, the ratio should be two. And you know, for different values, the ratio would define different pattern of this cycle. And by using, by having this uh, visiting ratio, we can model, then we can model a lot of things. For example, the total demand being served, the load constraints, the time constraint. So this, this, this part is pretty complicated. So the duration of the mathematical formulas uh, is very complex, but uh, here I won't go into details. But uh, if you want to more detail, we can talk after the seminar, which is actually very interesting. But we can see that the, uh, the, the formula would always depend on the value of the vehicle ratio. For different ratio, it would have different formulas. Then to compare, you know, to somehow demonstrate the effectiveness of the, uh, the, the CA method, we uh, compared our CA based method against uh, the state of art. Uh, Metrics method to solve the, you know, the factor and value problem, and for the same based, uh, based discrete method, uh, we use a certain call, uh, so-called cluster first, uh, round second method, and we use this uh, automatic discretization method proposed by Professor Ouya uh, in 2007 uh, to first partition the whole area, then we in each uh, each zone or each partition. Then we uh, design some, some very simple heuristic by following this vector ratio to construct the discrete route of the, uh, the, 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 the of tours. Then, how, so based on the result, we can say this, this one is, uh, we solve the, the problem by using the uh, state of art, state of art uh, vector heuristic to solve the vector uh, problems. And we can see that there are many crossovers between routes for the uh, vector heuristic method. Well, for the same based method, the routes are generally partitioned, you know, 
into different zone because we use cross first, right? And then then route then route second. Then so in this this type of uh, features would be kind of very attractive if in practice it's easy to follow first, right? And uh, if the uh, the service provider will somehow want to uh, you know assign certain territory to certain drivers, so this driver would always respond respond for this uh, this zones. This approach would be very attractive and very intuitive to follow. And we, based on the numerical result, we can also say that in terms of, you know, uh, no matter the average total demand being served or the average total distance being traveled, the same method can always reach like uh, close to 7% of deviation from the, uh, the solution uh, obtained by solving the metaphoric algorithm for like once uh, 1800 seconds, which is like half an hour. But the computation time for say is much shorter. So uh, we can say that we, the, by using this C-based method, we can solve the large scale uh, problems in a very short time. So uh, as we mentioned before, so we, we just finished the uh, local population. But after that, because of the surplus and the deficit in different zones, we somehow need to implement this line hole service to somehow to match and to clear all the this imbalance between across different zones. But well, here we need to uh, I need to mention that this 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 deficit or uh, or the excess or the surplus in different zones would depend on the local operations, right? So this local and line hall decision should somehow interde they are interdependent with each other and they should be jointly optimized. And here we gave out the uh, you know by combining the line hall uh, problem and the uh, local problem, we have the uh, formulation for the overall problem. It, it, it is a mixed integer nonlinear program, and we uh, propose a so-called uh, Lagrangian relaxation by uh, decoupling these two constraints. Then, after decoupling, the long haul subproblem can be decomposed for each vehicle, long haul vehicles, which is makes the the subproblem become a, a variant of one PDF TSP. This one can be solved, you know, more efficient by using the MIP solvers. And also for the local problem, can be decomposed with respect to each subregion. And for each subregion, the, it is a nonlinear uh, optimization problem, which can be is formulated you know, piecewisely with respect to the visiting ratio. And this problem is very simple to solve because it, it only have a few variables and a few constraints. We can uh, get the optimal solution very easily. So uh, to, uh, we also can uh, implement our method to a case study based on the uh, New York uh, city bike program. Uh, this is Manhattan area. We consider a third, a 30 kilometers square areas with uh, 351 bike stations, which, which means that the, 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 the bike sharing stations are really dense, uh, densely distributed in these areas. And based on the result, we can see that we can always solve the problem within like 5% of gap in less than one second, uh, no, one, one minute. So this, this method should be very effective you know, in, in terms of uh, solving the real world cases. Oh, okay, so, so summary is a little, uh, little bit about the vector problem. We uh, developed this kind of local approximation method for pick up a delivery process uh, in the homogeneous separations. And, and through this way, we can somehow reduce the difficulty of solving this uh, entire one PD, uh, one pickup and delivery problem. And uh, the, the search method demonstrates be a very effective one. We are trying to solve really large scale bike sharing event problems. And this is uh, the reference. If you are interested, you can refer to this paper for more details. And yeah, uh, any questions so far? Okay, then we'll move to the next topic, which is Ride sharing. The ride sharing, or what we call on demand ride sharing, uh, is kind of very, has been emerged as one of the most popular you know, uh, on demand transport mode in many cities. And uh, in, in some si si systems, multiple uh, the travelers with similar itineraries, they would share a vehicle. Instead of, you know, instead of using four vehicles here, you just use one vehicle and serve four, four travelers. And because of that, the, 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 that's why the ride sharing uh, system would have great impacts uh, to the urban transporting systems. Because you know, by through sharing, the, the, the occupancy of the vehicle can be increased. 
And by having a higher occupancy of vehicles, there will be less congestions, pollution, emissions, and fuel, and so on. So this type of rational systems, like as I mentioned before, is usually provided by what we call the mobility, mobility service provider. And because of the uh, you know wide adoption of the smartphones, this service provider has experienced you know tremendous growth in the last few years. But here I want, I want to emphasize that with the uh, the rapid advancement of the self-driving technology may even you know revolutionize the, this on-demand ride sharing systems. That's because you know by using uh, autonomous vehicles, we can get rid of drivers, right? And by getting rid of drivers, the the, 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 the 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 vehicles or the system can be more flexible, reliable, and and the the service provider can you know control these vehicles in a much easier way, right? And this, this is also why Uber and Lyft are so dedicated to developing uh, autonomous vehicle uh, technologies these years. But for the rationing, they, they still face this problem, which is spatial temporal imbalance of uh, demand and supply. Uh, here in our research, we somehow to we want we propose a so-called path-based pricing and vehicle dispatch uh, strategy to address this uh, address this issue. Uh, the main idea is that we're going to address this problem from two sides, one from the supply side and one from the demand side. From the supply side, since we are considering uh, autonomous vehicles, so the, 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 the service provider can control them. So in that case, the service pro provider can always dispatch some empty vehicles to a certain high demand area to capture more demand, right? For the, for the demand side, the, since the, uh, the trip fare, the, which is payment, you pay for the ride sharing, and also the trade duration are two of, two of the most important factors that would you know, somehow influence uh, the traveler's uh, registration behaviors. It is possible that we, we can you know, uh, give out, give out uh, some, trip, uh, some different path options with different uh, trip time and different uh, trip fare. In that case, we, we can somehow influence the traveler's registration behaviors. To give an example here, we consider this uh, very small zone. We partition the, the, this zone into uh, this area into nine zones, and at time t, we assume that the majority of the demand will come from zone seven to zone three. So, if we only consider about the, the travel distance, these three passes are very similar. So the uh, the, the traveler can you know should choose either one of them. But if we, if we can forecast that in the future, like in two time periods later, more demand would come from zone nine to zone three. Then in this case, it would be better that at time t, we just induce more travelers would choose this lower pass, so that at time t plus two, more vehicles will show up here, right? Then more demand, more travelers can be matched in this, in this case. So we're try, trying to, somehow trying to explore this spatial temporal distribution of demand to increase the likelihood of the right match. And the meanwhile, we want to you know, provide a certain kind of compensation to, to the possible inconvenience you know, that's, that's going to be caused to the riders by you know, pick up another passenger or drop another passenger through some, we call it pricing discounts or pricing decisions, other pricing decisions. So here we model this uh, problem as a multi-period by level problem to somehow capture this interdependent decision making uh, process between the, the service provider and the riders. And, and in each time period, we can see this pricing problem can be considered as a Stackelberg leader for a game where the service provider would act as a leader and they make you know, pricing decisions and the vehicle dispatch decisions and in the lower level, the rider would act as a follower, right? Then, then based on the price being given, they would choose the best path you know, to minimize their travel disutility. And after some, you know, competition, because of the, the vehicle are limited, so they have to compete with other riders. Uh, and after co competition, they would reach certain kind of user equilibrium. And this kind of uh, stackable leader follower game can be modeled as a bilevel mathematical program with equilibrium constraints. So given this framework, we are ready to formulate this problem. First, we partition the entire, re re entire region into different zones. 
And we uh, also consider a planning horizon, which consists of uh, a discrete number of design epochs. And at, at each design epoch, we, uh, we, we get to describe the demand based on their OD information, origin and destination information. And the OD is based on zones, right? The definition of the, the vehicle is a little bit more complicated because it's the, the, the status of vehicles not only going to relate to the vehicle, but all also going to be related to the, the, the passengers on board. So in order to uh, you know, describe the vehicle status, we need to keep track of the you know, location of the vehicles, the occupancy, how many, you know, how many passengers on board, and uh, also the passenger's destination, and their routes and schedule to deliver their onboard passengers. And after, you know, as time passing, the, and uh, you know, have different activities, these vehicle types for, like, for the same vehicle, their this type can always change over time. So for the, for the upper level problem, the, the, the service provider will decide you know, the pricing for different paths, uh, pricing different for different paths, and also the MDB will dispatch decisions. And their objective is to find the optimal price and maximize the total revenue over the entire planning horizon. For the lower level, given the price you know, uh, determined by the, the service providers, the each uh, travelers or riders, they're going to decide their best paths based on you know, this total disunity, which is a linear combination of the ride payment and time cost. And we, here we also consider uh, elastic demand, which means the uh, amount of demand would, or would depend on the, uh, the, the travel disunity of this type of demand. And after, after, uh, so after this, the, the different users would compete, uh, different, uh, co compete vehicle uh, resources, and finally they would reach uh, user equilibrium after matching. But here, the, the matching between the vehicles and the demand is not a, uh, actually is not an easy job. That's because uh, we really want to consider the experience or the you know the uh, travel disability of the onboard passengers. For example. Uh, here, in order to address this issue, we uh, we we somehow assume two two rules for this matching. One is that we have capacity for for the matching uh, for the vehicles, and the second one is that in order to uh, to avoid some very unreasonable detours for the upper passengers, we just assume that the long le zone level detours are not allowed in our case. Here is an example. So consider uh, we have vehicle and this dark. Arrow is the first passenger on board. It's going to go from zone 10 to zone 7. Then in that case, this, uh, yeah, uh, this blue line, uh, this blue path is visible. If the passenger wants to go from zone 10 to zone 4, it's OK. We can pick it up, right? Because it, it, it incurs no zone level detours. But these two uh, red arrows are not visible here because they would incur either either the detours for the onboard passengers or detours for the, the, the passengers that you know gonna be picked up. So we just you know eliminate these two kind of uh, passes options from our uh, feasible set feasible feasible pass set. And by giving these rules we can somehow de de uh, define a set of vehicle types that can serve certain type of demand which is here it's Q. And after matching the vehicle types, as I mentioned before, the vehicle type will change. For example, if the vehicle now is a non, non empty, which means the vehicle has a onboard passenger, in the next period, this this vehicle would either like drop off this passenger, right, or it would pick up a non passenger, or just simply you know move from this zone to the next zone by you know to to reach the destination of the onboard passengers. So there are so many different situations that would happen you know after matching. And as I mentioned before, the, the definition of the vehicle type is very complex. So this kind of transition or the, 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 yeah, the transition of vehicle types would be even more complicated. But uh, by combining the upper level and lower level problem, we have the entire formulation, which it, it can be considered as a multi-period MPAM model. Uh, this type of model is uh, very difficult to solve because of two things. One is the recursive of dimensionality, which is usually for like, dynamic program. We all have this problem. And uh, the other one is nonlinear terms that exist in the in the formulation. For example, the binding binding bind, uh, binding term in the upper level problem, and also the complementarity constraint in the lower level, which is KT, KTs. 
So in order to solve this problem, we propose a so-called approximate dynamic program-based algorithm. And uh, we also can design some customized subroutines to somehow trans you know, reformulate the, 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 the NPAT model into a solvable form. So since the ADP is, so is pretty standard here, I won't, I won't go into details. But uh, I want to mention that we, instead of, uh, you know, uh, other than the ADP, we also designed a so-called MAPIC strategy, which is actually maximizing the one-state revenue without looking into the future. So ADP can be considered as, you know, big decision by looking into the future. This one, not. So this one we can consider as a benchmark for our, our comparison. We, uh, in order to uh, show some result, we implement our algorithm on the uh, case study based on the Chicago area with some simulated demand data. So the, in the study area was partitioned into 20 zones, and we grouped these 20 zones into uh, four different types. And uh, so this yellow zone, uh, zones are considered as CBD, and the others are re we consider as uh, residential area, uh, areas. And we consider morning commute. So uh, we just assume that in a morning commute, uh, the most, uh, all, of, all of demand would just come from residential area to the CBD areas. And we also uh, to set up different uh, scenario for demand setting. We want to test the, the, uh, how the algorithm will perform in different uh, like demand patterns. And the results show that actually for all, type, all kinds of snap scenarios, uh, the ADP approach can improve, uh, you can outperform the MLP approach uh, you know, by, a, by a, you know, uh, significantly outperform the MLP approach. Which, which means that actually this type of dynamic uh, path-based pricing and the dispatch uh, strategy coupled with the ADP approach is very effective in this scenario. So to summarize a little bit, so here we somehow we develop a, a design a so-called path-based pricing strategy and the, uh, with the uh, vehicle dispatch de decisions to, uh, to better manage the ride-sharing right resources, especially when we are dealing with the imbalance, uh, imbalance issue between the travel demand and the uh, vehicle price. And by using ADP-based algorithm, we, uh, we demonstrate that this type of uh, strategy is very, is very effective uh, to address these issues. But, uh, uh, this, but this type of path-based uh, pricing strategies uh, hasn't been you know, actually implemented in the real world. So uh, we, you know, every, everybody uses Uber or Lyft. So right now, they, do, they are not offering different options. right? So we are looking forward, right? So if they are going to adopt our strategy here and try if, if whether this one works better or not. So, okay, to, to this point, we have asked, uh, you know, issues two uh, different approaches to address the uh, imbalance issue between the travel demand and the, uh, the, the, uh, and the resource supplies for the shared mobility systems. And actually, uh, this is only a you know, tip of the ice, iceberg of the entire system, and there, I believe there might be uh, plenty of uh, problems in these areas. And we are really you know, looking forward to you know, work on more topics in this area. And uh, you know, if you have any suggestions or comments, uh, please let us, let, let us know. And uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.
What we call CA based feasible solution. So this is how the uh, traditional or in a in a in a while people that would fix the problem is just you know using the materials materials to solve this mathematical model. But here, instead of doing that, we doing this kind of called class first and round second, based on the uh, the the weighted ratio we have we obtained by solving the same model. So. This cluster is what you mentioned about how to partition from the management side. You can do whatever you want, actually. You know, from the management side. But here we just we just met, we just care about you know different partition. After the partition, there will be no interaction between the partitions, right? So each uh, you know the uh, staff can only be res you know responsible for one zones. And every day, because in, in a, an overall yeah, they, they, he should be uh, or she will be very familiar with this zone, right? And the efficiency of the uh, the pickup and drop off can be actually increased or improved. So yeah, right. So by, based on our method, we can do that. You know, from you know, the manage, manage, the manager can do a lot of things through this part. Right. Yeah. Sure. Please. Yeah, very, very interesting, I think. Yeah. We will definitely look into that, I think, yeah, in the future. 